Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Project Ozone 3 Kappa Mode. So last episode, we ended up making an extreme reactor, and since then, I went ahead and I added in some applied energistics here. So we are automatically exporting Yalorium ingots into the fuel, and we're automatically importing uh, all the cyanide that comes out of the reactor. So we're essentially automated here as long as we have Yalorium in our system. So we also made the Yalorium seeds last time, and off camera I 10, 10, 10 those, so we have plenty of Yalorium ready to go. We can also sift for it if we wanted to do that, uh, but you know, growing the crops obviously is way faster and way easier, so that's the method that we're gonna go with moving forward as we need the fuel. Uh, this episode, what I wanted to do was I wanted to take a look at some of these other random quests here in the Lambda section. I was kind of poking through and seeing all the ones that we have here. We've already killed the Tarantula Brood Mother. Well, we didn't do it by hand. We didn't do it in such a way where this quest completes. We'd used a cheesy way <laughs> to kill the boss. So I'm going to go ahead and say this quest is complete. We might go and revisit this later on. Uh, in the future when we have way stronger armor, but for now, we're gonna leave that one alone, I think. Uh, so there's some other weird quests here that I kind of want to do. Like, I want to knock out the Twilight Forest quest. These aren't, like, super difficult, but they're quests and we should knock them out, right? Uh, this is one that kind of interests me, though, the, uh, Ghast Queen. I have never seen or fought this particular boss before. So this is from Nether X. And apparently, the uh, there's floating gas statues around in the nether, and you're supposed to put in a potion of sorrow and a gas tear inside the urn, and it spawns this boss. I don't know what it drops. I have no idea why you'd want to do this, but it interests me, so let's go ahead and get started on that. So we need a brewing stand. And we're going to need some glass bottles. Easy, easy, right? Some uh, warts. I can spell it right and some warts and we're also gonna need gassed meat mmm delicious okay so all of these things together and then also some uh, blase powder obviously all these things together we should be able to get some brewing going here so I'll place that down place some blaze powder here we will do that make the potions and that should go really fast and that should go really fast awesome so now we have three potions of sorrow plus our ghast tier. So we have to go and find the fungi forest biome and then find the special castles that float mysteriously around. I believe we have fungi forest pretty close to our nether spawn. Uh, we spawn in like a cold biome in the nether, I do believe. Let's go back to here. Or is this fungi? No, this is fungi forest right here. For some reason, I remember there being like ice and stuff around. I thought this was not a fungi forest, but apparently it is. So we need to find mysterious castles that float around or castles that float mysteriously around in the fungi forest. It looks like we are not in the fungi forest over here anymore. Uh, all right, so since this is just gonna be me trying to find mysteriously floating castles, I'm gonna do this off camera and then when I find one, we'll be right back. All right, guys, so I think this is what we're looking for. These floating castle things that look like a floating gas, and I think there's a gas spawner in them. Yeah, actually right there on top, that looks like a gas spawner, right? Let's just go ahead and get, whoop. <laughs> Let's just go ahead and get rid of this thing. Okay, so we have ourselves a broken spawner for a gas. Uh, it said that there's an urn inside this thing. Ah, you know, I've never been in one of these, I don't think. So, there's some loot there, some loot here. I mean, that's decent loot, I guess. Okay, that's cool. But, uh, Urn of Sorrow, it says it's not harvestable. Alright, let's put in, uh, a Ghast Tear. And a Potion of Sorrow. It said that's all we had to do. I'm not sure, <laughs> like, if there's a countdown or what happens here. Maybe, oh, oh, okay. Whoa, look at this thing. Ooh. Ooh, that's funky looking. Okay, so I... Oh! Interesting. 
Gastling. All right, so our sword does a lot. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So it just like constantly does that. <laughs> the sound. All right, I want to get rid of all of these little guys. Did we get rid of them all? Maybe? No, no. I still hear another one. I don't know where it is. Above me. That must be the last one down here. Okay. So we ended up getting the Gas Queen Tears. That was a crazy fight. Never done that before. I thought that would be kind of interesting. Uh, yellow Heart, bunch of Gas Tears, some more Catalyzing Glands. Nothing else special. Now, the Gas Queen Tears, we look at the uses for that. Oh. Oh, we actually have to do this. I didn't even look at this before. So we have to do this three more times in order to make a Philosopher's Stone. Ah, well, that's kind of cool. Yeah, I am fairly certain that I have never fought that particular boss before. And it's not super difficult. Okay, well, I mean, I can do it two more times because I have two more potions of sorrow. Uh, unless the thing... Unless you can only do it once. I'm not actually sure how this works. No, it looks like you can do it more than once. Awesome. Yeah, so I will do it two more times. Obviously not difficult. I'm going to have to go brew one more thing of the potion of sorrow so we can do this again for the fourth one. But yeah, that's pretty awesome. So it turns out the Ghast Queen does not seem to drop Ghast Queen tears every single time. It took all six of those spawns in order to get the four of the Ghast Queen tears. Yeah, that's kind of interesting. I would have expected that it would drop it every single time. I was thinking maybe my magnet wasn't picking it up or maybe something was happening, but... I made sure to kill the gas queen over land and it still wasn't dropping every time. So that's something to be aware of. You need more than just four potions in order to get all four of those, unless you get incredibly lucky. Ooh, exactly 100,000 diamonds. Just notice that. Anyway, uh, so we can go ahead and claim the 10 RAK from that. And Lost Cities Dimension. This is something that's kind of interesting to me. I heard about this earlier on that you can find some earlier game resources from the Lost City Dimension, but when I heard that, there wasn't a quest, and it seemed like it was unintentional to get there, so I never did it, but now there's a quest for the Lost City's Dimension in the book, and it says in order to do it, you need two blocks of lava crystal, a bed, and six skulls. It says to get to the Lost City's Dimension, all you need is six skeleton skulls, bed, and two lava crystal blocks. Right, exactly what I just said. Okay, so we need lava crystal blocks. Lava crystal let's do this so there's two of those we need six skeleton skulls and a bed and we have a bed over here i will move bed somewhere else how about oh okay so we got the quest complete for that i think the bed has to be on top of the lava crystals i think it has to be like this but i haven't actually done this before I assume this is what we do in order to get there. Now to get back, because I don't know if there's a way to get back or not, uh, let's make sure that we have, oh, you know what? We have the slash home command that we can do because we did set that. And then we also have these dislocators. So we have an unbound one. So I could make a warp to the Lost Seas Dimension. Um, let's go ahead and just check it out. If I right click on this, I'm showing that I'm just sleeping like normal. Okay, so that didn't do anything right click again i don't know how this works do i have to put the skulls up higher mm, let's go back to the quest book to get to the lost cities all you need is six skeleton skulls a bed and two lava crystals okay well it doesn't really say how to do that let's vein mine the skulls we'll try and put those directly around the bed maybe this is what it is oh that's what it was okay skulls had to be up higher all right, so we are now in the Lost Cities dimension. Interesting. So there's a bunch of Frendermen around, bunch of buildings here. We have sand. What else do we got right away? I mean, lots of clay and stuff that we could mine. That could have been useful earlier on too. What is this? Yeah, that's terracotta. I mean, just vein mine the entire building away. Ooh, there's spawner there. 
Okay, I really don't want this terracotta. I was just kind of seeing what we could do with that. <laughs> uh, let's get rid of the ladders too. So we have a spider spawner. Interesting. Oh. I heard something. I'm not sure what I heard though. Okay, so we have furnace. We can loot those. Crafting table. Not sure we need to loot that. Dead bush. Okay, there must be more spawners down below. Oh, what is this? This is a skeleton spawner. Okay, so we can find decent amount of spawners here. Let's vein mine this all the way and see what we got. Oh, yeah, look at all the spawners here. Oh, there's an enchantment table. Wow. They're just kind of giving you all the loot, I guess. This could be really good early game then. Let's get rid of this stuff. Don't need that. I'm not even sure I need these spawners, but we're going to go ahead and keep them anyway. So there's that, a zombie spawner, another spider spawner. Like we could uh, soak touch those and use those for the apotheosis spawners, but I'm just kind of getting rid of them for right now. I'm sure since this is the very first building that we found, I'm sure that there's other spawners very readily available. And down here, ooh, you're dead. You're dead, you're dead. Uh, okay. Oh, there's definitely a skeleton spawner here somewhere. I just saw the thing. Okay, very good. Cool. All right, well, we saw this very, very first building. What is this? Is this quartz? Ooh. That's actually... That's actually a really nice early game supply of quartz. I guess you need to, like, macerate it or pulverize it or something eat it in order to uh, turn it into the actual quartz, but... That's kind of cool. All right, let's actually put these things away in our AE system. All right, cool. So other than that, uh, I'm not sure if there's anything special here in the Lost Cities dimension. There's a lot of buildings that you can go and loot. I'm seeing, oh, that's a chance cube. I am not interested in that. Looks like we can get ourselves some fluid cows, steam, liquid nitrogen, yeah, all right, so this is really, really cool. So, like, if you were going to redo, or I guess if I was going to replay this, this might be something that I'd want to visit really early on and uh, hopefully get a decent amount of loot. Get some more fluid cows here. Mushroom stew, molten endurium, liquid nitrogen. What are you? Primal mana. Man, there's so many of these fluid cows around. I just kind of want to see what they all are. Creosote, methane... Ender, what are you? Cryothium, nitrogen, sap, and nitrogen? <laughs> okay, well, I think all of these are going to be relatively the same. I haven't really explored Lost Cities previously. So there is a cauldron in there. More spawners. Uh, I guess what I would like to see is if there's loot chests in any of these buildings. And if there are loot chests, what kind of loot they have? I saw there was another furnace. Uh, books brew stand. Can't click on it. Gotta click on the base. Okay, the brew stand doesn't have anything special. Okay, that just happened. Uh... <laughs> yeah, a lot of furnaces. Okay, well, I mean... This is pretty cool. I like the generation here. This might even be like pretty interesting to do an entire playthrough in the Lost Cities dimension. Like as soon as you can get here and then start building your base in this area. It could be interesting. Why are there so many monsters spawning during the daytime? I don't know. That seems odd. Um, it is daytime, right? Yeah, it's daytime. All right. Well, anyway, I think we saw what the Lost Cities dimension is. We got the quest complete in our book. Actually, let's go in here. This looks different. I don't know if monsters just spawn at all times of day. Oh, there is loot chests! Mana steel, shadow gem. Anything else over here? That floor looks really torn up. So there's a spawner. Uh okay. Okay. Well, I mean, since there is loot here, this definitely could be kind of interesting as a start, I guess. You're dead. And it looks like this might go down. No, there's stairs here, but it does not go down any further. All right, I think we've seen what we needed to see. Let's move on, guys. All right, back at the base, safe and sound. The next quest wants us to make this portal to the void block. 
And that requires a block of diamonds, some um, eyes of ender, and obsidian. I'm not really sure why there is a portal to the void in a skyblock world. Um, I guess if you just want a second void dimension, I'm not actually sure. Or maybe it's for if you wanted to play this in a non skyblock version, so it gives you access to have the ability to play in a void world. I I don't know. Um, so then we needed eyes of ender. Okay, so that's everything, and then a portal to the void. Let's go set this over here for now. Quest complete. Awesome. Let's claim this, and we'll also claim the Lost Cities one. So that's 20 more RAK. And we are up to 1717 17 of the stuff. All right, let's uh, go here. Right click, and as expected, it's a void world, nothing in it. Okay, not sure what we will put in here, if anything, but it is a quest, and we saw it, and that's about it. So if I right-click on here, it takes me right back to the portal to the void block. Now I wonder, oh, this thing is mining really slowly. Can I actually mine this? Yeah, okay. I was going to say, I wonder if I take this and move it downstairs to, like, uh, where we put our portals and stuff, is it going to warp me to the same location, or is it going to be different? Oh, actually, it did move me slightly over, didn't it? In a different terracotta. Yeah, because we started over here. So what happens if I go back to use this one? It takes me to my home point, maybe? Okay, interesting. Well, I mean, we saw the uh, simple void world. <laughs> Uh, again, I'm not sure if we're going to need that for anything since we're already in a void world. I can, you know, just go further out somewhere, chunk loot something, and it'll be exactly the same. Um, well, anyway, so now that we have that complete, the other things that are left here are the Ice Queen that we still need to defeat in the Twilight Forest and the, uh, the Questing Ram. So in order to do the Questing Ram, I know where it is in there. We've flown over it before. We need to give it one of every single color of wool. Uh, we have plenty of wool, so I just need to get all the different colors of wool, and then we can right-click them all onto the questing ram to complete that quest. So let me go ahead and get some dyes together, try and get all this stuff going, and then we will be right back, guys. All right, guys, so here in the Twilight Forest, their spawn is right over here, and this structure right here is the questing ram. If you zoom in a little bit, you can kind of see there are rings around this area, and I think the color slightly changes, and it kind of goes to a single point. Not that the single point matters, but it's just kind of one of those interesting things. You can also find rainbow-colored trees in this biome, but yeah, our target is right here. So that is uh, over to the west southwest a bit, so we can head over this particular direction and go find ourselves this questing ram not too far away from our spawn point. Like I said, I have flown over it quite a few times because we've had to go over this way. You can see the different waypoints, like to the maze and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, I mean, see that we're entering the biome with the rainbow colored trees and the, the weird ring biome stuff. Anyway. Uh, so our questing ram should be over here somewhere, unless it has died, which I'm not... Oh, it's up here. Aha! <laughs> Normally it's inside that structure. I think it hangs out around here. I don't think I've ever seen it outside of the structure, but here we go. So, we can go ahead and start right-clicking the different uh, wool onto the ram, and once you get all of the different colors on, uh, yeah, it gets bigger every single time. <laughs> we'll get the quest complete, I do believe. All right, there's a light gray, gray, light gray, white, yellow, purple, brown, pink, and magenta. That's the last one. Awesome. Okay, so quest complete. Very good. Um, so we ended up getting the Twilight Shader Questing Ram, which I'm just going to go and throw away because we're never going to use those, let's be honest. I'm going to throw that away too. We'll keep the trophy. So we get one of each of the different types of uh, vanilla blocks, like the metal blocks or material blocks, whatever. Uh, there's also a dispenser here that gives you some different wool. 
to help you out, I suppose, at the start. I don't think there's anything else special about the questing ram area other than the questing ram itself. And I'm not sure if besides just giving you these blocks for giving you all the different color wools, if there's anything else useful. So you get the crumble horn as well, which I believe turns cobblestone into gravel and then gravel into sand or whatever. If you use it, it's got a certain amount of durability. Let's see if we can dig down real quick and maybe see this happen. Vein mine a little bit away. Yeah, so you see it's turning the stone into cobble, the cobble into gravel. Maybe it just... It makes a crazy sound too. Maybe it doesn't turn gravel into sand. It looks like it just mines it. So that's kind of interesting. I assume you should be able to put mending on there and use this for other things if you want to, but honestly, I've never seen a real use for it. <laughs> anyway, it's kind of a cool little thing if you haven't seen it before. So now we are off to the Ice Queen, which is the last quest that we need to complete the Twilight Forest. And our snowy biomes here, icy with the penguins is here, and somewhere in this area is gonna be the Ice Queen. So let's head over to the North Northeast. Penguins! All right, so we found the penguins in the Twilight Forest, and right over here is the Ice Queen Castle. Now that thing is really cool looking. I do like the textures that kind of swirl around a bit. You can mine those blocks and you can build with them if you want to. In the past, they were pretty laggy. I'm not so sure that they are anymore. I guess we'll find out as we get closer to this thing. Um... Yeah, I'm not sure that they're like really laggy. Uh, actually, no, I'm f eh, I don't know. I know in the past they were really, really laggy, but I guess they must have fixed that. It doesn't really feel that bad anymore. Well, anyway, we're looking for the Ice Queen, which is gonna be, I think, in the tallest tower or one of these two towers. Um, normally you're supposed to go in from the bottom, I expect, right? But we're just gonna go ahead and kind of cheese this because we have a jetpack and we cheese things. What's in this? We got an ice bow, arctic fur, maze wafer, packed ice, ice bomb, and an arctic hood. Okay, well that's kind of cool. Uh, we did not find what we're looking for, so the ice queen, I would assume, is in this particular one. So let's go and vein mine this one away. Oh, I see something. We don't, we didn't find the ice queen itself, but we definitely got a message about her. Alright, just delete all this stuff. We definitely don't need this, and if we need it, if we ever want to build it, we can definitely uh, vein mine more. Okay, so here we go. There's the Ice Queen. So you can't hit it from the bottom. You have to hit her from the top. And... With a jetpack, it makes this, like, super simple. Let's be honest here. <laughs> Okay, so we ended up getting a triple bow, a tri bow. I assume that shoots three arrows at once. Um, I can only imagine it's gonna do pretty limited damage since everything in the Twilight Forest is essentially designed for like vanilla gameplay. Yeah, and we are pretty far ahead of vanilla as far as damage goes and all of that kind of stuff. What is this? Oh, more of the Aurora block. All right, right, I'll just put those away. I don't know if there's anything else here worth investigating. I guess we can go down. So it looks like there might have been a staircase up. Um, maybe... Yeah, there's kind of like a staircase in here, isn't there? Just go and vein mine down. All right, so this appears to be the proper way in, potentially. Maybe not. There's definitely a thing here. Where? What level are we at if we try and poke through? Hmm. Yeah, I'm not exactly sure what the intended path is to get up to the Ice Queen, to be honest. It definitely looks like there was a staircase here, where there's supposed to be. Maybe, maybe there's like another room below? Nope. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Looked like there was actually something over here. Potentially. Yeah, I don't know what the actual intended path was supposed to be. But, that is the Ice Queen. That was the last boss that we needed. Uh, for that quest line. So everything is now done in here except for this particular one. Let's claim that. We will claim this one. And this one requires the 7x7 seven seven extended crafting 
table in order for us to make the wand of animation. And we aren't quite there yet. Well, let's go ahead and go back to the base and figure out what our next plan is. All right, guys, so I was kind of looking at what we should do next, but we are kind of running a little late in the video right now. But I wanted to revisit these Gas Queen tiers that we saw earlier. So if we look at the uses for them, we do need the ultimate crafting table in order to make the Philosopher's Stone with those. We do have all four of those, so we are good here. But in order to make an ultimate crafting table, we need an elite crafting table. So that is going to be a lot of ultimate components. Uh, crystal cluster, like everything here is something that we can do except for green diamonds, which does come from Galactic Craft. Now, the thing that I'm noticing about this is we don't have to make any of the previous tiers as part of this recipe, but we still need the elite crafting table, the diamond color one to make this, which we don't have. So the diamond color elite crafting table does require a bunch of elite components, two of the advanced crafting tables, infused diamonds from RF tools, block of Dragonstone from Batania, and of course, blue diamonds from Extra Planets, from Galactic Craft. So it looks like in order for us to proceed along with the crafting structure here, we are going to need to get into Galactic Craft. So that's something we're going to be doing here uh, fairly soon. I don't know if we're going to be doing that next episode or the episode after, but soon. Uh, that makes a quantum compressor, it looks like, with the Elite Crafting. We can make creative modifiers if we have the stuff with the Elite Crafting. Creative Cobble Generator. I'm not so sure that's something that we need. I wonder how a Creative Cobble Generator, like how much cobblestone that makes, that even is necessary. I don't know, maybe for EMC generation or something, for passive EMC generation. I did add in here our tier five cobblestone generator that we haven't been doing anything with. And I have that going into a barrel. It's been since like the beginning of the episode going or so. And we have 1,800 blocks of cobblestone. I think we're doing okay on the whole cobblestone situation. Now, one of the reasons why I did that, uh, oh, the jetpack is not allowing me to, to go up this thing quickly like I was expecting. The reason why I did that is because I did add in another Zenith furnace over here because we are running out of uh, Emmy interface space for patterns. And yeah, so I wanted to provide cobblestone through applied energistics into our crucible. And then we are providing that lava into the back of two of these Zenith furnaces over here. So I figured it'd be a good idea to get rid of like the old setup that we had a hopper going into this thing. And yeah, just provide it through applied energistics. Also, we didn't really have a way to generate more cobblestone in AE if we needed to make more furnaces or anything like that. So, yep, that's what we did with that particular thing. But anyway, guys, I think with that, we're going to go ahead and wrap up the episode for today. Thank you guys for watching. Remember to leave a like on this episode if you liked it, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye-bye.